Bishopstone Yarns and I'd like to welcome you all here today. Um, if you're a new viewer, welcome. It's really nice to see you. It's really nice to spare um, spend some time with you and if you're a returning viewer, hi again. It's really nice to see you as well and as I was saying, I'm Kathy, and this is Bishopstone Yarns and this is a podcast mainly about knitting, uh, spinning, a bit of weaving if I get around doing some, a bit of sewing and basically just a few bits and pieces of crafts that I enjoy doing. So it's really nice to uh, spend this time with you. I'm coming to you um, from Tasmania which is the small island off the south of Australia and today is Monday, April the 25th, which here in Australia is Anzac Day. And Anzac Day is um, the Australia New Zealand Army Corps. And so today um, is a day of remembrance and uh, remembering the day that. Um, the Australian and New Zealand Army landed at Gallipoli in Turkey and it was I think Australia's first major uh, offensive um, during the war. So um, if you want to know more about it you can look it up um, and uh, yeah you're probably much better off reading about it on Google than me trying to explain it to those people um, who are outside of Australia or New Zealand. Um, but it is a day that, um, yeah, it's a big remembrance day for um, soldiers and um, laying of wreaths and things like that. So it is the afternoon now. Uh, it's usually in the morning when um, the ceremonies are on. And um, yes. So I was waiting as well for the sun to come out but um, today when I woke up it was very foggy and kind of misty and it is supposed to be uh, quite sunny today but the sun hasn't appeared yet so I thought I would just go ahead and um, start the podcast even though I've said it's not sunny um, I have had to take my glasses off I'm going to try and do this 
blind uh, without my glasses so I can't read my notes um, and um, because there's so much glare here in my studio uh, if I didn't tell you before I'm coming to you from the corner of my studio and um, I yeah I couldn't find any position where I could have my glasses on that there were it wasn't just full of glare so maybe I might have to start thinking about where else I can um, sit to uh, do this podcast where I can consistently do it without getting glare all over my glasses because it would be much easier to do this with my glasses on. Um, I've got my cup of tea here which I'm going to just have a little sip of at the moment. <clears throat> I do feel <clears throat> a little bit um, a little bit croaky at the moment. Um, I know there are so many colds as well as COVID going around. Um, so hopefully we'll get through this without me kind of um, having to stop too many times or take too many drinks of tea. Um, but anyway, I hope everyone's got a nice drink that they're um, all feeling well. Um, I still feel very much like I'm on holiday. Not that I'm actually on holiday, but I guess a little bit out of routine because we've had Easter and the Easter break and now Anzac Day, which is a public holiday um, in Australia. I am uh, just feeling a little bit, oh, a little bit out of routine. So um, almost as if we're still in holiday mode. <laughs> But um, I thought since last Monday I didn't make a podcast. Um, that would have been my spinning podcast. Um, I will catch up on the spinning podcast again next week, but because it was Easter Monday and um, it's always kind of a busy time around Easter and I thought I would just give a week off. So I hope everyone had a really nice Easter. They had um, a really nice, enjoyable time. And... Uh, did we get up to well we had some family time and then um, we went on a little trip with my dad just a, a day trip um, and we went up to have a look at um, a place where we used to have our uh, a shack when we were growing up and it just the shack was built on the same land in the same place where my grandmother used to have her house which was across the road from where my great grandmother um, had her house, and uh, it's a very, very tiny township. And um, my great grandparents lived there. They had the shop in this little town. They had the dairy and um, quite a bit of land, and they um, had this. Uh, I think they had about seven children so the old kids kind of grew up there and um, my grandmother being one of them and uh, yeah so it was fun to go back and revisit um, this little area which it's no longer a township it used to be a milling town and so there used to be it used to be quite a high of activity um, when we had our shack there, there were only a handful of houses and um, it's really probably the same now, <laughs> just a handful of houses. The paddocks um, that used to be there are no longer kind of farming paddocks. They've been taken over by pine plantations and um, yeah, so it's a little bit different to how it was when we were kids and roaming around through the bush, but um, got a chance to walk down the old railway line, have a look at the um, the only thing standing from my great grandmother's house is the old chimney, which actually was uh, so it's not a brick chimney, but it was built from the local um, river stones, which are nice and rounded. And um, as a child, I used to go. To this chimney and I'd actually sit in the hearth of the chimney because it was just standing by itself. I used to sit there and really it was just a really nice relaxing calming place. 
it was a place that I felt at home, a place that, um, you know, I spent a lot of time in and around there and just next to the chimney, um, there is a very large oak tree, which still stands, that my great grandmother had um, planted. So that's lovely to know that, that that is still there, considering that it's now covered on one side by pine plantation and then on the other side of the railway line it's still um, native bush so we had a little walk through the bush and um, it's a very what would you say um, the bush up there is a very wet um, kind of a um, wet kind of bush it's got a lot of ferns and a lot of moss and lichens and things like that um, and we had a little walk down to the, the river which is nearby which we spent many hours fishing in when I was growing up and swimming in and the water was absolutely freezing <laughs> in the river it, it, it used to come down from the mountains and so the water was always very very cold but there was one point where there was a bend in the river and you could swim across it. The river wasn't, it wasn't very wide. It's not a very wide river, but because it was so cold, once you got in the water, it was like, oh, oh across to the other side. And there was a rock ledge. So you could swim across, we could, we'd get out, we'd sit on the rock ledge, dry off, warm up, and then we knew we had to get back in the water to get back to the other side and um, so it was nice it was really really nice going back and seeing um, seeing the, the place that I spent a lot of time at when I was growing up and um, just getting back the the kind of enjoyment I guess that I had as a child when I was up there and um, and seeing you know the side where it was just the native bush to see that it was still just native bush and it's just looking after itself and the railway line is no longer in use so that's slowly um i guess you know nature is slowly taking taking back over the railway line but um yeah no it was a really nice trip up there and um yeah so I spent a bit of time with my dad on a I should probably go back and tell you where you can find me on the internet. You can find me as Bishop Stone Yarns on Instagram. You can find me as Bishop Stone Yarns on Facebook. And the easiest way to find me on Facebook is if you go if you're on Facebook and go straight onto my Facebook page. Don't Google me and go on to a Facebook page that says Bishop Stone Yarns because that is not um, the one that will come up is not me and so if you just come on to me on by via your own Facebook page then you will get to me um, and you can find me on Ravelry as Bishop Stone and uh, on Ravelry, I also have um, created a, pay, a group there called Bishop Stone Yarns Podcast. And so anyone who's on Ravelry who wants to come over and have a bit of a chat or leave a comment or a photo of what they're making or what they're doing, um, that would be great. It would be lovely to see what everyone else is making and what they're up to. So um, feel free to come over to the Bishop Stone Yarns Podcast. Um, group on Ravelry and have a chat so I'd love to hear about what you're doing I'd love to see some photos and um, anything else you'd like to have a chat about so that's a, uh, a group where everyone's everyone's welcome and just a space for people to have a bit of a chat and it doesn't necessarily have to be about the podcast it could be about crafting or about life things or whatever you want so hopefully um, I can see some of you over there. Right, well I guess we should get back in, straight into the crafting. I might start with what I'm wearing. So I have uh, shown this before. This is um, Sea Change by Jennifer Steingass. 
and as I was saying today is very overcast it's quite cool actually yesterday was quite sunny and lovely <laughs> and so um, I, I can't judge from one day to the next what I'm going to be wearing or what I think I'm going to wear for the podcast because the weather seems to change um, quite quickly around here so um, this is a really um, really warm and really nice jumper just to pop on um, to keep me nice and warm today uh, this I have uh, this is not that old um, but it is um, already starting to peel a bit um, which I was a little bit disappointed in but um, but then again I do wear it quite a bit so um, yeah I've got my um, the information about the wolves and everything I've used for this on my Ravelry page um, and um, yeah but it's a really nice jumper I really like it it's really nice um, nice motif fits really well um, I have found because I've been wearing it a lot it has dropped a little bit but that's the yarn um, and I don't know if I said before or not but I'm not really a brown kind of person but this wool had been my um, mother's she wore a lot of browns and um, autumn tones and so I thought I would um, make myself a jumper out of this wool um, yeah but actually it's very nice very nice and warm for today as well so that's what I'm wearing and uh, we're going to skip over the finished um, <laughs> items for this podcast because I don't have any finished items haven't got anything finished whatsoever um, I have done a little bit of knitting on the ranunculus here I think last time I was up to about here and so I've just been knitting in the round and I was hoping to have this finished by this podcast <sighs> but I haven't <laughs> as you can see I haven't even started um, my sleeves yet but um, so I'm still knitting away on that and I really hope that I do actually have it finished by next time um, and again yet again the same story as last time I have been working on let me get the pattern up first on um, this one here which is the ancient gemstone shawl and um, by Lana Lois Lois Lana 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 Jo Joris no oh, yes uh, so I've been doing that as a knit along shawl or with interweave and so far so this has been taking up most of my knitting time if you can kind of see kind of starts over here goes through to here so it's a little bit hard to show you but um, there's quite a bit of knitting involved in this uh, where are we it's quite um, quite a wide shawl and for this I'm using my hand spun uh, there were three different balls um, there was the kind of like the there's a purple a blue and a variegated pink that I've been using um, and I would ha also have had this finished as well except I when I was working on this section here because I was running out of yarn well getting to the end whoops getting to the end of my yarn I thought um, that what I would do was on the increase side here I thought I would stop increasing and I would just um, go straight so have the same number of, of stitches and continue on and so have a kind of a shawl that went like this and then went straight for the last bit so I knitted the whole 
whole section of that um, without any shaping and then I came back and looked at it and decided that I didn't like it at all I thought I it wasn't going to be there wasn't going to be enough of it to make the actual look of the shawl um, look nice I thought so I ripped it back I frogged it or if uh, um, for those people um, I learnt a fantastic word tink which is knit backwards thank you to Christy Glass and her podcast where she was talking to another lady who was uh, explaining about um, tinking her yarn because that is knit backwards <clears throat> so I thought oh I like that but yes I used to just say I've just frogged it so I frogged all of that and then started re-knitting again. Um, the other thing is, I mean, I have knitted quite a few shawls in my time. I don't think I've ever knitted a shawl that's just one long triangle. So it's going to be interesting when it's finished um, to see how I wear it. I'm not sure. I mean, kind of yes anyway when it's finished i'll give you a bit of a demonstration and show you how i decide to wear it or what i decide to do with it but um so far so good i'm really loving the colors of course i mean using my hand spun of course these are in colors that i absolutely love and it's in merino 100 percent australian merino um and yeah what's not to love about merino um it's great for something like this for a lovely shawl for something that's going to go next to the skin and this is so lovely and soft i really wish that you could feel it because it is so soft it is just glorious but i as i was saying i am getting towards the end of my yarn so I only have, I've run out of, finished the pink. And so I've got quite a bit of the purple, but only a very small amount of um, the blue. So I, let's see if I can hold it up here. I don't know if you can see. Anyway, I thought I'll just knit through until the end and then decide whether I just do a few rows or a section in the purple. Um, but I think it's I think it's going to be big enough as it is. I, I don't think it needs to have a lot more length added to it. But I'm really enjoying that. But it is taking up quite a bit of my knitting time. And yeah, so it'll be nice to just get on to something um, like the Renunculus, which is just simple kind of knitting round and round and round. And I don't really have to think about what I'm doing um yes i just have to have another drink of tea okay i mean i did have one finished project if that's it or not those people who um watch my spinning podcast as well which is on um every other week um so this is the alpaca and silk <coughs> that I had been spinning up. <coughs> and, <coughs> oh dear, I wonder if the camera is going to come into focus. There we go. Um, yes. So um, this, the silk is the multicolored blues and pinks and purples. And the alpaca is the gray. Um, now this is, I have washed this and it has bloomed up a little bit. The alpaca has bloomed up nicely. And um, yeah, it's really nice. Um, this one I had been thinking about making a shawl from as well. I have got some more of the silk left over, which at the moment I am spinning up some purple to go with that. And I had thought about um, 
well, the purple is um, merino. <clears throat> so I had thought about putting those two skeins together to make a shawl. Um, I'll wait till I finish um, the other skein before I decide what I'm going to do with it. But it is this is super soft. Um, the alpaca and the silk together just makes such a beautiful, beautiful blend. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so that that was one finished item. Hi, sorry about that. I just had to stop to have a bit of a cough. <laughs> um, so I guess that's all of my knitting that I've been doing, but and some spinning. But I have also been doing some sewing. So. Um, for those who saw the podcast where I talked about uh, the shop hop that I did and I got this pattern which is the um, hmm, is it going to yeah the hugs and kisses um, hexi zipper purse so I have started piecing my bits together here which I'm quite happy with and um, with Hugs and Kisses, what they do is they have um, uh, the fabric that they use or the material that they use is an iron-on um, shape. So you just iron it on there onto the back so you don't have to worry about um, uh, doing like a stitched basting. And then you use um, a, uh, a little... Um, glue pencil um, to stick the fabric down and that's how you do it. I have um, made one of the Hugs and Kisses um, double bed um, quilts in the past which used the same sort of um, um, technique where there was a lot of applique so each square had quite a bit of applique in it and then um, I used the glue, well, the, um, the iron-on material and then the glue stick um, to stick down. Um, and that worked really well because you had a lot of kind of like shapes of round shapes um, and petals and um, there were a lot of um, stems as well which were done with bias binding. So you made your own little bias binding and things like that. But it worked really well um, for things like flowers and small, unusual shapes. So, um, yeah, so that's how it's going so far. Been enjoying that. And it's a nice little portable project that I can um, take with me when I go out somewhere. So I can work on it um, when I go um, to quilting group or to somewhere else. So, yeah, I'm really liking it. I'm really looking forward to getting that finished. And for those people who saw the last podcast, that along with my ranunculus and the shawl are all on my Make 9 list. So if I get those three finished, at least I will have a third of my Make 9 list done, <laughs> which would be lovely. The other thing I have been doing is I have been... Um, sewing on uh, I've been working on the farmer's wife sampler quilt and um, so I've done a few more of those just trying to remember I can't quite remember whether I've shown you this one or not but I'll just go through the ones these extra oh, hold over this side so I finished this one and as I was saying in the last podcast as well, what I'll do is I'll probably ma end up making a short podcast just about the squares. So once I've got up to maybe 20 or something, I will do a podcast just about the squares that I've been making. And I will also say I am not a sewer. I am not a quilter. Um, I am enjoying making these, but don't look too closely because my sewing is not very good. <laughs> But I am having fun. So, and I've just got the little tags here with the names um, on each square. 
and uh, this one when I first saw it I was really really scared of doing because I thought oh my gosh all those little tiny pieces it wasn't as bad as I thought um, and I guess this is where it shows up my lack of skills <laughs> in so many ways but I'm still very proud of myself that I, I've been trying a whole heap of um, uh, squares and blocks that I never ever it, like if it was just left up to me I wouldn't have I don't think I would have even attempted any of these um, because I would have thought there is no way that I would try this but because it's part of um, is it 111 different um, blocks um, it's been fun and it's been fun to do them um, God. Um, I still think for me as well one of the hardest things is choosing the colors um, I have bought a few more um, fabrics but I don't want to buy too much I really want to use up as much of my stash as I can but then as well I want the blocks to look nice so I also want to um, yeah I spend a fair bit of time trying to work out what to put which colors to put together um, if I'd gone with a each block with a limited range then maybe it would have been a lot easier and a lot quicker um, to decide the colors but because I'm using the colors that I have I'm kind of hoping that at the end they will all go together and then there's one more square which I'm actually thinking whether or not I need to redo this whole square I really like this square but um, everything was okay until the very end when I went and ironed it for the last time and I had some trouble because I think one of the materials I've been using I don't think it's a cotton and it kind of caught on the iron and has left marks I have tried I have um, wet it and tried to um, take a bit of the, the coloring out I don't know whether or not I should wash the block because I'm worried that it might shrink or I'm not quite sure what to do so this is the block and I was really happy with the block I was happy with the colors but I think you can see where is it? over here where um, the iron caught the whole thing and I have had a piece of this material before which I was ironing which kind of curled on itself um, when I was ironing it which that's why I'm thinking maybe it isn't cotton maybe it's got some sort of polyester or a rayon or something man-made in it so I'm kind of I really like the square and I really want to have this in my quilt I'm just unsure as to whether I should just make another one but considering that I've got so many blocks to make it would be a shame to have to remake one but then I um, I'm just not quite sure whether or not that is going to come out anyway needless to say I have put this light colored material out of action I have moved it out of the pile which is a shame because it was one of the very few light colored um, fabrics that I have but anyway I'll decide what I'm going to do with that later I still have so many more blocks to work on and so many more blocks to finish and just have to look down at my notes now <laughs> So I guess that's basically everything um, that I've kind of been working on since our last podcast and uh, even though I haven't done a lot, I mean I have done a lot of knitting, um, the shawl has taken up a lot of my knitting time and especially when I had to frog back that entire section and then re-knit that 
Um, so that has taken up most of my knitting time simply because it's um, because it's a pattern and because there's so much knitting and I want to get it finished just so I can get onto the ranunculus and finish um, knitting this. <sighs> I don't feel I don't feel like I've done a lot but then I have done quite a bit of sewing and quite a bit of spinning as well um, and of course while I've been doing that I have been watching quite a bit of YouTube um, and so I have um, I thought I'll just mention a few here a few podcasts that I've been watching and really enjoying um, so I found some newish, well, newer ones to me. They're not actually new ones, but they're newish to me. <laughs> is um, Cherry Hart from the UK, who does a lot of um, crochet, and um, I've really been enjoying that. Along with the Craft House Magic podcast, which is also she does um, a lot of crocheting, knitting, and uh, and she dyes yarn as well. And then um, I have kind of got down the tube, the um, down the tube, <laughs> down the rabbit hole of floss tube, which I, I shouldn't have started. I shouldn't have gone down that path. But um, there has been um, so I've been watching a couple of Australian ones. One is Nikki Noodles, and the other is the Fox and the Rabbit, and. Uh, well, I have been watching a lot of YouTubers, but they're the two the two Australian ones that um, I've recently found and been. I mean, always like to um, watch Australian podcasts as well. And so the fox and the rabbit, um, they have had uh, some flood issues recently, um, where their business their their business is at their home, and of course a lot of the east coast of Australia has been. Um, flooding recently and so they've had water into um, part I, I guess it must be downstairs the part of their house um, and um, so I'm wishing them well and hoping that um, the waters um, don't kind of come back again that their their um, their move to a new premises will be um, uh, smooth and easy for them and um, uh, I've really been enjoying watching them um, and the other one, Nikki Noodles, she's also, I think, up on the east coast of Australia. And um, so she had made, well, not just she, but a few other people at Floss Tube had made this pattern as well, but the, the Sweet Pea Bunny. So it was a cross-stitch pattern of um, a three-dimensional kind of bunny rabbit doll um that um she had made and i thought oh i really like that that's really really nice because it'd be really nice to add some cross stitch pieces i think for an easter display which is what a lot of um the floss tubers had been showing recently as well their easter cross stitches and um and then i had seen that uh the lo one of the local embroidery shops in hobart had had the um, the pattern for sweet pea but then she was sold out so then I was thinking oh I'll have to do a bit more research and see if I can get one from I mean it's always easier if you can get it from um, close by because then you don't have to pay for postage um, and but then I might have a look and see if I can find something just on the mainland that I can get um, uh, it sent from there and then I have, of course, found a few other floss tubers who've made some really cute um, bunny rabbit um, samplers. And I think is it? Um, the, I think there was a, a designer called um, La Dida, and they have these really cute bunny rabbit kind of cross stitch patterns. And then, so that was fun watching that. And then I'm thinking, oh my gosh! I mean, years ago I used to do quite a bit of embroidery cross stitch and um, my very first cross stitch I ever did was when I was living in Denmark because um, in Denmark they do a lot of well this is 30 something years ago um, they a lot of the houses had cross stitch pieces in them and um, a lot of people did cross stitch and there are some quite well known 
Danish cross stitch designers and I loved I absolutely loved their patterns and they a lot of them revolved around nature and um, changing of the seasons and things like that and so the very first um, cross stitch pattern I did was like um, a piece I guess about this big with a bell pull at the top and the bottom and it was for my parents I think their 21st wedding anniversary so I custom made it so the groom had black hair and the bride had red hair to match my parents and um and it still hangs up in their house and um uh, so yeah that was that kind of started and then i did um of course a big one of denmark and then i did um some of i was um did a, a little series of little tiny ones of Hans Christian Andersen's um, kind of uh, little uh, pictures of his some of his stories that he had written and then yes well it, it just all kind of <laughs> evolved from there I've done a few table runners and, um, and when I say table runners I mean the center bit pieces I haven't sewn them into um, the bigger pieces yet. I should say that yet. And then I was thinking, do I add those into my whips projects? Because I do, and same with even some of the um, Hans Christian Andersen little pieces, I had cross-stitched uh, cross them, finished them and put them away in, a cup, in the drawer because I didn't know what to do with them. But actually watching some of the floss tubes, I have worked out, oh, there's so many things you can do with cross stitch when you finish them. So um, they don't actually all have to go in a frame. So yes, maybe that's something else that I need to kind of pull out and have a look at and start thinking about finishing, especially the table runners, because one in particular was on such fine material. I thought it was going to drive me crazy. It was super, super fine really hard to see I wish I'd had a magnifying glass when I was sewing it but it's finished and um, now I just need to add uh, kind of like a border piece around it so I can use it as a table runner um, yes as if I need to put more things on my whips list but um, maybe I was going to say maybe I can put them on next year's mag 9 but maybe I shouldn't wait to next year. Maybe they're kind of, yes, I don't know. They have to go on the list somewhere because I have to finish them. <laughs> but um, yes, but I was very, very keen by this sweet pea pattern of this little bunny rabbit, the little bunny rabbit that will kind of like to um, toy kind of stuffed bunny rabbit. So yes, I'm going to have to go in search of that and see if I can find it. So that's probably um, about all that I've been up to really. Um, so I've had a really nice Easter. I've had a really nice um, little road trip with my dad and um, reliving some of my childhood memories, even though um, the, cat, the shack that we had is still there. Um, but the area itself has changed quite a bit, and but it's still nice. Uh, to go back and see the place where my great-grandmother had her house. Um, I have some bulbs that actually came from their garden. Um, so I still have some of those. I love I love all those little connections uh, that kind of connect us back to people and relatives and um, kind of like a living memory, I guess, in a way. Um, I guess that's why having some bulbs from my great grandmother's garden, yeah, just it's just a nice kind of continuity, kind of yeah, it makes me feel close to um, family, from the, yeah, and, and and their lives, and it's nice to know that I enjoyed the area that they grew up in and the area that they lived in, um, I enjoyed it in a different way. Um, would have been quite a hard life for them living on the dairy and running the local shop and things like that but um, it's still nice it's still nice to have that little connection 
and it's nice to see that the big oak tree is still there and standing very very tall and looking great well i hope everyone else has had a really nice easter a nice easter break and have had a chance to spend some time with family and friends and get some crafting done and yeah so it's been lovely to spend some time with you and have a chat um, if you like this video give me a thumbs up and subscribe because um, if you subscribe that helps um, me out here in this little part of the YouTubes and also helps other people um, find find me <laughs> and um, yeah, leave a comment I always um, love to see people's comments and um, yeah I will see you all later Bye.